Hey, if you're thinking about purchasing a townhome or a condo, you might want to stick around and hear what I have to say. When I bought my first condo way back in 2003, there was a little piece of information that my realtor failed to tell me about. So I made it my job when I became a realtor to make sure anyone who buys a condo or townhome specifically is aware of this important information. Stick around. I'll be back in nine seconds to give you all the details. So as I said earlier, when I became a realtor, I um, wanted to make it my job to inform people as we should as realtors about all the ins and outs and the do's and don'ts of buying property and the things that you can get yourself into. And this is one particular piece of information that when I bought my condo back in 2003, uh, it was my second property. My first uh, property was a single family. This was a condo. And it was one piece of information that he forgot to tell me. And, and it made a big difference in my <laughs> bank account. Um, so before I get into that story, does everyone know what the difference in a monthly assessment for an HOA or townhome community versus a special assessment? So we use the word assessment interchangeably for these two situations, but when we say monthly assessment, that's basically means you're just paying your monthly HOA dues for whatever the community is, is, um, uh, taking care of with the money that they're getting from you, whether it's, you know, swimming pool, tennis court, sidewalks, master insurance of the building, um, you know, lots of things, street lights. There, there could be many, many different things. And every condo and townhome community has a list of different things that they cover as far as what your HOA money goes to. But this one specifically is about a special assessment. And this is the part that a lot of people don't understand and don't realize. So I'm getting ready to tell you exactly what happened to me. So the year was 2004. I think earlier I said 2003, but it was actually 2004. And I was uh, selling my single family home that I purchased back in 2001. I had uh, pretty much renovated every square inch of it and I was done. I'd had it. I couldn't do it anymore. And I wanted something easy and simple. And so I decided to look at uh, a condo and I ended up purchasing in a neighborhood that was um, relatively newer in town. Uh, the, the front units at the front of the property were the oldest. And then as time went on, different builders came in and were building more units as they went to the back of the property. And they pretty much all looked the same. So when I got into my property, it was actually the model of the community at that point. And so it was uh, brand spanking new. It was really, really awesome. It was decorated very nice and, and, and everything. And so I was excited to get this. Um, but after I was there for a year, uh, we found out that some of the older units up at the front of the property were having some wood rot issues. And so they assessed those specific units for the wood rot. So basically, when I say assessed and we're back to the special assessment, that means they uh, found out about how much it was going to cost to fix all the wood rot on those particular units. They went to the homeowners and said, okay, we don't have enough money in our HOA account, which we'll get to that in a second as well. So we're going to come to you to give us the money so that we can fix this, this problem that we have with these particular units. You, you, you have been assessed. Been assessed. Been assessed. Been assessed. Been assessed. And so, you know, they wrote checks and begrudgingly, I'm sure, and the work started. Well, they found out that after they started pulling things away, that the wood rot was way worse than they ever thought it was. So what did they do? They came to all of us. You, you, you have been assessed, been assessed, been assessed, been assessed, and asked for money. And, you know, of course, a lot of us thought it was really unfair because we were in brand new units. This was not affecting our unit, but that's the way it worked. And so I was um, younger at the time, didn't have a lot of money saved up. And I had to pay a thousand dollars as a special assessment and I had to scramble and find the money. So, um, and you know, it was taken care of and, and I paid it because that's part of what you do when you're a part of an HOA, uh, um, uh, membership situation. And so, um, uh, it, it was, it was, um, it was, it was disturbing, I guess, in a way, because I was not ever informed about a special assessment. I didn't know that that could happen. Um, so a couple of points here um, and a couple of things to think about when you're purchasing in a condo or townhome community. Uh, and, and I'm saying townhome and condo community specifically because typically in a planned neighborhood where there's single family homes, 
it doesn't affect you in that way uh, as much. And it, it could, but normally it's a condo or townhome type situation. So the first thing you want to do when you're looking at a townhome or condo uh, community is you want to try to get the financial information from them to see how much money they have in their account. You want to ask your agent to find out if there are going to be any upcoming um, uh, assessments of, for anything at all. And if so, are you going to be responsible for it? Or is that something that you can negotiate uh, from the seller to pay prior to closing? So that's a very important thing to note. If they don't have a lot of money in the account, just know in the back of your head that you need to keep some money kind of tucked away in case they ever come to you and the citizens of the community and say, you know, we've got this problem. We need this amount of money. Now, I don't bring you this information to scare you away from buying in a townhome or a condo community because there's many, many benefits to living in a community like this. Uh, normally, townhomes and condos are a little bit more affordable than a single family home, especially in Wilmington, where prices are really, really high. But um, the, the, the problem that comes along with that is, is the actual HOA monthly assessment, if you will. Um, those tend to be uh, quite a bit high and they're definitely not going down right now. So there's, there's lots of things to think about when you're, when you're looking to buy in these types of communities. But the biggest thing is that assessment because you don't want to get slapped with something after you've been in your property and you're like, where did this come from? So you need to ask questions. You need to, you need to make sure that your agent is digging deep and finding out about the financials, find out how much money they have in a reserve account so that if anything does go wrong, they're not coming after you and you don't have to worry. But it is always good to have a little nest egg saved away just in case. Hey, don't forget to stick around to the end of my video. I've started this new thing called Port City Lost, and I feature buildings and historic homes that we unfortunately no longer have here in the Wilmington area. But I think you'll find this very interesting. So make sure you stick around to the very end. So to recap, you have a monthly assessment or your monthly HOA dues that pay for whatever it is you agree to pay for that the community is taking care of. Special assessment, that's the joker. That's the one you gotta watch out for. So you wanna make sure your agent really investigates for you to make sure that you're not gonna be caught with your pants down when they come to you and say, okay, Mr. Buyer, we've got some problems here. We need you to fork over some money. You have been assessed. So you might wanna have that nest egg stashed away. Again, don't wanna scare you into buying a condo or townhome. Wonderful properties, I have one myself. I absolutely love it. It's carefree living at its best. So if you enjoyed this information and thought that it was informative, please consider subscribing so you don't miss a thing. I love bringing information about what it's like to live in the greater Wilmington, North Carolina area and some real estate tips from time to time. I'm Billy Corbett with Port City Living at Keller Williams Realty. And as always, if someone doesn't have a smile, you know what to do. You give them yours. If you're familiar with Wilmington, North Carolina at all, you'll know the historical area has some incredible architecture. The Bellamy Mansion on the corner of Fifth and Market Street is probably one of the most iconic structures in downtown Wilmington. This property was built in 1859 and it has stood the test of time with grace and beauty. Few know that just to the right of the Bellamy Mansion stood the Bellamy's son's home at 509 Market Street, and it was equally as beautiful. But unfortunately, fire claimed the property in the early 80s, and today, this is what we have left, a parking lot. We have lost a beautiful home, and it's happened many times over in Wilmington, North Carolina, but I wanted to give you a glimpse of what once was Port City Lost.